the next speaker uh, is uh, Professor Madhusudan Penna ji. Uh, uh, just a brief introduction. Uh, Professor Madhusudan Penna has been awarded with Sahitya Academy Award for Mahakavya on Gulab Rao, Mah uh, on Gulab Rao Maharaj. He has 45 books to his credit and has recently translated the Gyaneshwari of San Gyaneshwar into 9,000 Sanskrit verses. Professor Penna has about 17 awards and honors. He was honored with honorary dealit by National Sanskrit University, Tirupati, Andhra Pradesh for his unique contribution in Indian philosophy. The Tirumala Peetham, established by Bhagavad Raman Shacharya in the 10th century, has confirmed Shastra Ratnakara on him. His presentation today will be on yoga as understood by Abhinava Gupta. I invite Professor Penna to... Take us through his session. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devu Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Param Brahma, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Hari Om. My respectful salutations to the great Maha Maheshwara Avatara, Abhinav Gupta Acharya and all the other vibhuti that have really embellished the earth and uh, contributed greatly to the upliftment of this mankind. And uh, my sincere pranam to our modern Rishi, uh, Professor Rastogi sir, and uh, all the great personalities present here. This is really great opportunity for me that I am a small man, but invited to speak on some thoughts of Abhinav Gupta. So I, I prefer to speak on the yoga aspect that is reflected in many works of Abhinav Gupta Acharya. So if you permit, I would like to share my PPT. Absolutely, sir. Please go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Is it visible, ma'am? Yes, sir. If you could yes. just run it, and then I think we'll be good to go. Yes, please. Oh, yes. So, Abhinav Gupta on yoga. So, I had great fascination for this great Acharya when I was working on his commentary on the Bhagavad Gita. So, uh, for my M.Phil degree. So, I was studying Shankaracharya's Bhashya along with uh, Abhinav Gupta Acharya's Gita Artha Sangraha. So, I was really delighted. I was uh, carried away by the profundity of the thought there, the way of presenting ideas in, the, in an order. So really great fortune in one life that I was introduced to Abhinav Gupta Charya's philosophy. And uh, fortunately, I could get uh, this uh, K.C. Pandey's book also. Th this is the first uh, thesis on Abhinav Gupta, his life and his works. So that also immensely benefited me. So I had studied both and developed a kind of attraction. So I uh, started studying many of his texts like the, initially it was only Pratibhijna Vivruti Vimarshini, then Bhagavad Gita Vyakhyana. Then we had Dhanyaloka with Lochana uh, as a part of our MA program. So I studied that Lochana and I was amazed that such a great uh, philosopher gets into the intricacies of poetics also, Dhvani, and a very, very subtle analysis of the concept of Dhvani he made in that. And later I studied, and some of the scholars like Padma Shri, uh, Kulela Ramachandra Dusar and others held that Abhinav Gupta Acharya was actually over-projecting the Dhvani concept. What Anandavardhana Acharya intended was differently projected by Abhinav Gupta Acharya. That was his observation. But I personally feel that Abhinav Gupta Acharya was himself a great yogi, definitely. And he was also uh, a great mystic. And various uh, dimensions are there, various dimensions of his personality. So I would like to uh, throw light on some of them just to remember. So here we find a great philosopher in Abhinav Gupta. Somebody was uh, asking why Abhinav Gupta Acharya is not recognized as a philosopher. Actually, had he written an independent work, he would have been regarded as an independent scholar. But what happened, he commented, though his commentaries are regarded as 
complete texts on any system uh, single works are not available and even in his uh, tantra loka we don't find any independent uh, uh, proposition but he was actually compiling and uh, processing and presenting all the ideas so many tarka schools um, tantra schools uh, prevailing during that particular time and uh, on one side we find him as a philosopher carrying the legacy of kashmira shaivism then we have in him a mystic this is reflected in the first part of uh, uh, the tantra loka also in tantra loka we find how he gives importance to some of the diksha kriya and he promises there that you the, th- during diksha kriya you can invite your uh, forefathers your predecessors and you can offer jala tarpana to them etc so these are the claims that he makes then aesthetician of course we know from his lochana commentary and abhinav bharati so very very subtle analysis of the concept of beauty whether it is verbal or objective it is the aesthetic uh, sense aesthetic uh, treatment of the things he has presented in his words that is one influential musician because kc pandey also had written in his book that during his period he was considered as a great musician and uh, uh, one of his images the four not exactly photographs but one of the pictures paintings so that uh, shows him playing on veena so influential musician and a poet so he himself was a great poet uh, this this is evident from many of his works like uh, uh, some stavar there bhairava stava and other so these actually reflect the fine poetic uh, merits then we find in him magician so though he had not commented on any of the logic books like gautama nyay sutra vatsayana bhashya or uh, vachaspati vishna may be contemporary or later one but uh, the previous logic books he did not refer to uh, those books he uh, did not uh, comment on them but in him we find a very trained logician because the way he analyzes the things and presents them in a perfect order that actually shows that he is a good logician and in some parts of the tantra loka we find how he uh, takes upon something and puts across uh, in an order and he brings out the fallacies in others argument perhaps on the lines of uh, somadatta that, that is shiva drushti because in shiva drushti we find a very very beautiful and uh, very methodical treatment of the ideas like shanikavada shunyavada all it, all these are treated in shiva drushti also so those ideas may have been taken by abhinav gupta and uh, may have been given a good treatment in his other works also so thus we find in him a very uh, a, a kind of uh, congregation conglomeration of all the uh, these uh, various dimensions of his personality then we find in him a perfect yogi and a perfect yogi as jayadratha puts across in his commentary he says abhinav gupta acharya reflects all this a perfect yogi whatever he is supposed to possess the six main qualities abhinav gupta possesses he says the first thing is avya vicharini bhakti as uh, the 13th chapter of bhagavad gita says bhakti rav vicharini vivikta desha sevitam so here also in abhinav gupta we find his unflinching faith in god the god energy then realization of mantra this is the second one in which we find that whatever mantras he had learned from his teachers practiced and mastered so he has realized the efficacy of mantra it's not that he had just uh, repeated the mantras he had just uh, uh, continued the same mantras in his books copying from the other books it's not like that he had realized the efficacy of the mantras then control over all the 36 principles so shat trimshat tatva sandoha is also one of the beautiful kashmira shaiva text so all the 36 principles are there tatva and uh, he has written the commentator has written that uh, abhinav gupta acharya has full control over 
all these principles then successful activities or you can say success in all the activities he has undertaken this is siddhi so he has got siddhi then poetic creativity so uh, as uh, arvind ghosh also had written somewhere in his integral yoga that the best of his poetry was an outcome of best moments in uh, meditation he said so th- that came out uh, the beautiful moments he had experienced in meditation so that uh, got expression in the form of poetic uh, creativity so abhinav gupta acharya also had this poetic creativity and we know from his tantra loka that at many places he uh, beautifully presents all these uh, ideas like bhaskaracharya the great uh, uh, mathematician then spontaneous knowledge of all the disciplines he had studied so we know from history that he had studied several shastras from the available teachers at that time like uh, batendu uh, batopala and uh, many other because at one place he himself says that uh, just like a honey bee a student should acquire knowledge a honey bee moves from one flower to another flower and collects honey similarly a sincere student should go from one teacher to another teacher and get right knowledge from the able teacher so this kind of uh, uh, practice he demonstrated in his life that spontaneous knowledge of all the disciplines like sankhya yoga especially in tantra loka we find uh, all these important uh, schools of philosophy uh, being analyzed and uh, sometimes criticized but that is healthy criticism so all this we find in his tantra loka also tantra sara is uh, a kind of summary of tantra loka so spontaneous knowledge of all disciplines that means when he takes upon one particular discipline immediately he absorbs it he assimilates the essence of that particular shastra and whenever whenever it is necessary wherever it is necessary he presents the essence so this we find in the tantra loka pratyavijna vivrut vimarshini also uh, as uh, the learned speaker was telling before uh, he studied vyakarana uh, with all intensity that he remembers the rules and wherever they are to be applied he applies them with all care in gita sangraha we find how he explains the words like uh, sat or um, upodghata or samvit all these words are explained etymologically so his vyakarana sankhya yoga nyaya vaisheshika puramimamsa uttaramimamsa all these disciplines were thoroughly studied by abhinav gupta because before that 8th 9th centuries in kashmir uh, there were so many philosophical systems in vogue like uh, advaita of uh, shankaracharya and uh, this mimamsa shastra bauddha so all these philosophical uh, systems were already being studied in kashmir during that particular period and abhinav gupta had a great exposure to all these and he was fortunate to have a uh, great teacher and that's why he had this uh, great quality like spontaneous knowledge of all disciplines so such a great personality and uh, uh, in the year 2016 we had celebrated the 1000th year 1000th birthday of abhinav gupta acharya and with all reverence we remember this great vibhuti that uh, had preferred to take birth in india and uh, really immortalized the great ideology that india had produced so offering my uh, great respect to this uh, scholar and vibhuti i proceed when abhinav gupta acharya is talking about yoga he had full idea that patanjali yoga sutra was already there perhaps vyasa bhashya was also already composed because at some places we find some similarities between the thoughts of abhinav gupta acharya and the thoughts that uh, vyasa bhashya karta presented in his bhashya so therefore 
Abhinav Gupta Charya must have studied Yoga Sutra with uh, available commentaries, or maybe he may have studied those uh, with good teachers, good yogins. That's why immediately he assimilated the essence of yoga, but he had a different understanding of yoga. And at several places, he uh, differs from the uh, prevalent yoga practice. And very unfortunately, in spite of all his best efforts, even today, the same yoga is continued. What Abhinavgupta Acharya had discarded, saying that this is useless. But still, people are practicing that for petty benefits. So, Abhinavgupta Acharya had studied yoga. Abhinavgupta Acharya had analyzed the content of yoga, the practice and fruit of yoga. And he had himself developed a different kind of yoga. This you can find in the Tantra Loka also. That it is Sarva Tattvanam Chiti Yojanat Yoga Mityahuti. So somewhere he says very clearly that the yoga sadhaka, he matures into such state that he actually takes everything into that Paramatattva. So that is Chit. And he merges everything into that uh, Chit only. So that kind of mergence is known as Yoga, according to Abhinav Gupta Acharya. But if we compare this with the um, previous definitions of yoga, we find that uh, some people call yoga as some yoga, some people call it as the yoga, some people call uh, uh, take it that take the same word in different sense also. So, what is that ultimately? Whether it is Jivatma Paramatmanoho, some yoga yoga uchchate as the Smritikara had mentioned earlier, is it only a kind of mergence? Or is there, uh, are there two different things that you merge one into another? Are there two different things? Does really any mergence happen? In yoga, uh, because this was observed in the Bhagavad Gita also, that Sri Krishna himself says that there is actually no mergence. When there are two things, one thing merges into another. When there is only one thing, there cannot be any emergence. And following the, uh, the, the statement that is found in the Mahabharata, later in the Yoga Sutra also we find, Chittavritti Nirodha. It is not a Chittavritti Yojana. So it is Chittavritti Nirodha. Though it is uh, rather passive, so it is Nirodhatmaka Yoga. But Abhinav Gupta Charya has a different understanding of this. He says, Yojana is possible. Yojana is actually uniting, merging. But it is, it is not in the sense that we understand that Jivatma is merged into the Paramatma or Shukra Shonita Sanyoga Yoga Uchchate. All this is meaningless according to Abhinav Gupta Acharya's explanation in the Tantra Loka. According to him, all the tattva, that means all the 35 tattva should be merged ultimately into the Shiva tattva. This is the Shiva drishti that uh, even Somananda was talking about. So that Shiva drishti and uh, uh, merging everything into the Shiva, this is the ultimate purpose of yoga. This is exactly what Abhinav Gupta Acharya felt. And in this particular uh, background, if we try to understand the uh, philosophy of uh, Kashmira Shaiva Darshana on which Abhinav Gupta Acharya uh, yoga understanding is based, we understand that here also we find three categories, Shiva Tattva, Shakti Tattva, Jiva. But ultimately, this Jiva and uh, Jagat, these are not different. So, Abhinav Gupta Acharya is not ready to discard this Jagat like Mithya. Mithya, as Shankaracharya and his predecessors preferred to discard that as Mithya. In whatever manner you uh, do it, but it is Pratipanno Padho, Traikalika Nishetha Pratiyogitvam, Jnana Nivartyatvam, Sad Viviktatvam. So, in that manner, they had looked upon the uh, material world and they said, you just remove it. And in order to get to the ultimate reality, you have to 
come out of this and unless you think that it is only a false image you cannot uh, really get to the shiva realization so everything will everything else that means other than shiva will stand as an obstacle in the path of yoga therefore in the other systems we find shiva is the ultimate reality or brahma and jagat is only mithya and jiva is none other than the same brahma and in the abhinav gupta acharya's understanding also which is based on the, the shaiva philosophy three are there but this jagat is not mithya though some of the shaiva thinkers prefer to use the word abhasa they take it in a different sense not in the sense that adi shankaracharya had taken because adi shankaracharya has used the word at several places in his bhashya brahma sutra bhashya atasmin stad buddhi smruti rupa paratra puru drushta abhasa etc he had explained this abhasa this is adhyasa according to him and he had concluded very clearly that it is the avidya that he is talking about and avidyastamayo moksha etc but the abhasa that the shaiva thinkers had given is different that here the a upasarga added to the root bhasa is taken in the sense of ishat alpatva therefore abhasa means sankuchita bhasa limited manifestation or expression so this abhasa you find at several uh, levels like the maya kanchuka the five kanchukas also if you observe you find everywhere some type of sankocha and because of this sankocha only that shiva becomes jiva so it is parinita pramatritvam it is the uh, the uh, the kala sankuchita kala that he is talking about and of course we find similar uh, idea in the brahma sutras also para vidhyana tu tirohitam tato hyasya bandha vipariyayo so it is cause of bandha that limited knowledge limited power limited occupancy so all this is limitation and this limitation is because of maya they said therefore it is maya kanchuka so the brahma the supreme transcendent one it is vishwa uttirna because vishwa is the manifestation and beyond that the source is there from that source only the vishwa is manifested it is not arambhavada parinamavada vivartavada but this is the you can say it is abhasavada or swatantravada swatantravada with reference to the shiva tattva abhasavada with reference to the jiva or vishwa so it is abhasa a limited manifestation but beyond that there is reality that's why pado osya vishwa bhutani tripadasya amritam divi the yajurveda also says very clearly that the reality is much more bigger than what we observe perceive what is the object of our knowledge it is beyond that it is vishwa uttirna but when something is created it cannot be out of the jurisdiction of this therefore it is vishwa maya so whatever is manifested that automatically carries the shiva tattva and shiva tattva is there even beyond this vishwa these are the two aspects that the kashmira shaivism um, states in their texts like uh, vishwa uttirna vishwa maya the immanence of the shiva tattva and transcendence nature of shiva tattva two aspects and jiva is spiritual limitation or individual that is anu then what is this jagat material world it is the supreme creative energy immanent in creation see the difference is adi shankaracharya's uh, philosophy takes this as maya which is which is uh, inexplicable anirvachaniya etc sadasabhyam anirvachaniyam they say but in abhinav gupta acharya's philosophy it is the shakti and therefore shakti shakti mato abhedaha on the strength of this particular principle they say that the jagat is also ultimately shiva in the other systems it is not accepted because 
they say that if if there is kari karana bhav then the karya is supposed to carry the characteristics of the karana and if jagat is the karya of brahma or shiva then it should reflect all the characteristics of the uh, shiva tattva or brahma tattva because the jagat is reflecting different characteristics it cannot be the effect of brahma or shiva this is the general logic that they put forth but it has been refuted vehemently in the ಆರಂಭಣಾಧಿಕರಣ ಇನ್ ದ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸೂತ್ರ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿ ಫೈಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ತದನನ್ಯತ್ವ ಆರಂಭಣ ಶಬ್ದ ಸತ್ವಾಚ್ಚ ಅವರಸ್ಯ ಭಾವೇ ಚ ಉಪಲಬ್ಧೆ ಸೊ ಮನಿ ಸೂತ್ರ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಫೈರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪಾದ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಈಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕ್ರಿಟಿಸಿಸಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಟಿಸೈಸ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ಎನಿ ಅದರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ದನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ದಿ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದ ಕಾಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ a very difficult thing to establish but it is very efficiently handled by this uh, anand uh, vinoy gupta acharya and for this the shakti is again divided like para shakti apara shakti para para shakti so three layers like para shakti is the transcendent energy para para is the middle like it is connected to this and this transcendent and immanent then apara shakti is there this is the vyakta swarupa in which every everybody is totally carried away almost all the mandadhikari are fatuated in this one only that means they develop fatuation for this apara shakti only and it is the thing that the isha vasya upanishad also um, speaks about like hiranya may hiran mayena patrena satyasya api hitam mukham tatvam pushan napavrun satya dharmaya drishtaye so actually everybody is totally mesmerized by the apara shakti but the philosophers try to uh, elevate the level of this sadhaka and take him to para para then para shakti and a kind of union with the para shakti is the goal of all yoga and in this avinav gupta acharya's yoga system if we observe we find that it is more integrated unique pragmatic world affirming and universal because we under, understand here that uh, abhinav gupta acharya had studied all available shastra during that particular time and he had taken the important points from those schools and he developed a kind of system in his uh, commentaries and uh, independent work like tantra loka that you find a kind of integrated ideology that's why it is unique and universal because it does not prohibited anybody it welcomes everyone provided he possesses the required qualification and in this particular positive pragmatic philosophy you find the word chitta chitta vritti all these have their respective position their respective um, value that nothing is completely negated discarded nullified so this kind of a very important uh, contribution that we find in this uh, yoga so this developed between the 8th century and 12th century ad and the yogic experiences are so wonderful that every at every point of time even in the shiva drushti we understand them that uh, all these are not just uh, repetitions that we we heard from somebody and we are repeating the hearsay instead they say that all these are experienced and can be experienced such kind of yogic experiences are mentioned in these texts and there is one shiva sutra vismayo yoga bhumika so this itself speaks of the great like yoga bhumi kaha vismaya so whenever it is the uh, whenever the word vismaya is used in the shaiva texts we understand that vismaya is referring to yoga bhumi kaha because they are wonderful yogic experiences then we have uh, the text from which we can glean the information about the yoga so mahamaheshwara acharya abhinav gupta had written uh, authored this tantra loka in 12 volumes 
and there are about 37 chapters and 5,859 verses. And we find scattered information about the yoga. Apart from this, we have some texts on Kaula Sampradaya, Pratyabhijnana Sampradaya, Spanda Shastra also, like Spanda Karika, Spanda Sandoha, Pratyabhijnana Hradayam, then um, Krama, Kula, Spanda. So all these were the schools and many texts were written on them. And we can get this information about what kind of yoga was accepted by them and what kind of yoga was uh, regularly practiced and recommended for the mankind. So we can get from these texts. So who were the prominent uh, teachers and schools at that time? We understand that there was one Triambaka yogi. He was an Advaiti monastic and Amardaka Dvaiti Srinatha, that is Dvaita Dvaiti. See, in Kashmir Shaivism also, as in the uh, Vaidika Vedanta Sampradaya, we find all these pure Dvaiti, pure Advaiti, Dvaita Dvaita, etc. Because such references are found in the Brahma Sutra, like, uh, uh, like uh, Pratijna Siddhe Rashmarathyaha, Sampatte Riti Jaiminihi, Ashmarathya Apishali Jaimini Kasha Krishna. These names are found in the uh, Brahma Sutra and Shankaracharya explains each one that this particular thinker belongs to the Dvaita philosophy or Dvaita Dvaita philosophy or Advaita philosophy. Similarly, in Kashmira Shaiva philosophy, we find this pure monistic idea, uh, dualist idea and uh, mixed Dvaita Dvaita idea. So these were the thinkers. And we find the Pratyabhijna school, Somananda, then Krama school, then Kula and Spanda school. Each one was developed by a particular teacher because it is affiliated or attached with the name of that particular teacher. And uh, Abhinavagupta Acharya was very lucky that he had studied many of these important works from very authentic teachers, very good teachers. And now when we uh, talk about the yoga, generally what we understand is we are in the body, we are observing, experiencing and participating with the universe outside, the world outside and the world is the main obstacle because the world is in the form of all the impurities from the 12th tattva to the 36th tattva like the grossest pancha mahabhuta, then subtle tanmatra, then the indriyas, beyond that there is mind, beyond that there is ahankara or ego principle, beyond that there is intellect, beyond that there is the prime matrix of the universe, that is prakriti. And without the participation of purusha, prakriti cannot function. Therefore, purusha tattva is also accepted as consciousness. And all these actually is impure, that is malina adva, ashuddha adva according to the uh, Shaiva philosophy, Kashmir Shaiva philosophy. So it is Ashuddha Adva. All the uh, 24 principles of this Sankhya, it's only Ashuddha. And now the Kashmiri Shaiva thinkers have contributed uh, immensely to the subtle analysis of further categories. Like there are some categories which are pure and impure, like Maya, Kala, Vidya, Raga, Kala, Niyati, all these is actually nothing but limitations. If it is Kala, it is Kala Krita Paricheda. Madhusudana Saraswati says in the Advaita Siddhi Hetu Visleshana. So it is Kala that which, which brings limitation to the objective world. Because of this Kala, there is limitation. Atyanta Bhava Pratiyogitva. Then we have niyati. It is actually the limitation in cause and effect relation. Raga, limitation in the fulfillment of desires. Vidya, limitation in knowledge. Kala, this is actually the first expression of the reality, they say. And all this is because of maya. So maya kanchuka, 
the five fold kanchuka this is pure and impure because there is shuddha um, uh, about this there is sadvidya or shuddha vidya therefore it is actually connected to that so pure and impure then we have all the pure tatvas starting with the sadvidya then we have ishvara sada shiva shakti and shiva shiva is the ultimate one this is the anuttara anupaya according to the shaiva terminology so now this yoga of abhinav gupta is all inclusive very pragmatic it actually takes into consideration each element of this creation and tries to open our eyes to the reality that each one can be perceived realized as manifestation of the shiva tattva only and therefore perceiving that shiva tattva in every element around is pure yoga so in this process the the sadhaka may adopt any technique any method but according to his temperament according to his spiritual qualification he has to adopt that particular method and there are three methods that abhinav gupta acharya also observes and uh, explains in his tantra loka the anava anava do anava mala is there it's anava paya shakto paya shambho paya we understand that actually this yoga practice starts with anava upaya this is the uh, low, lower one it starts with that in which we find all hatha yoga practices breathing exercises and karma yoga selfless service is also included rituals worship pilgrimage fasting vrata niyama yama niyama all these are included in the anu upaya anav upaya and all the body and physical actions mental actions these are all included in the anav upaya and abhinav gupta acharya very uh, clearly says in the tantra loka that anav upaya is for the low qualified spiritual seekers that means if a person is less qualified in the spiritual path then he can go for anav upaya like hatha yoga hatha yoga sarvoyam raja yoga se siddhaye so this is hatha pradeepika similarly here also anav upaya should actually enable that particular person or strengthen that particular sadhaka uh, so that he will be he will become eligible for the next two shaktopaya and shambhava paya so the next one is shaktopaya shaktopaya is also known as gnanopaya here knowledge plays an important role shaktopaya so here the techniques involve the mental energy like swadhyaya dhyana dharana bhavana and uh, the uh, mental repetition of the mantras so all this is shaktopaya then as a person masters the anavopaya and becomes eligible for the shaktopaya then in him he finds rapid change he is physically changed mentally changed and intellectually is also changed because he finds in himself some new thoughts just uh, flashing so that kind that kind of a kind uh, uh, surgeons is known as the yogic uh, uh, accomplishment now he will become eligible in the shambhava paya he, he will get into that shambhava paya here it is based on the will then we understand where that particular consciousness is centered in ourselves then we focus our will concentrated effort of will we remain balanced in the particular point and here it does not require any external or internal effort so this is effortless but still it is an upaya upadaya api ye tyajya ha tan upayan pratyakshate pratyakshate this is uh, vakya padiya bhartulhari says that upaya is that which is taken by somebody and after 
accomplishing something just discarded upa aya so shambhava is also upaya because shambhava paya makes a person eligible for the next anupaya anupaya actually there is no upaya itself that is the sahajavastha that is the ultimate state so these three are given in the uh, uh, the shaiva philosophy and abhinav gupta acharya now and then refers to these only and he wants the sadhaka against the allurements of anupaya the siddhi etc he says no no you don't limit yourself to the material things getting this or that always this is actually your sankocha so raise above and beyond all these raise yourself from the infra ascension to the supra ascension take yourself to that reality and for that shakto upaya and shambhu upaya are there and once you master the shambhu upaya the next one is nothing but the pure shiva so here i have explained that anubhavaya is only for inferior aspirants while shaktopaya is medium aspirant shambhava for highly qualified aspirants then when we come to the theory and practice of yoga we find there that in the yoga that abhinav gupta acharya had preferred and practiced himself and recommended to most of his students is that kind of yoga which does not involve any physical torture in tantra loka he clearly mentions this that torturing your body in any way is not recommended so in asana pranayama and uh, in mudra and other things there is lot of torture given to the body so that kind of training or that kind of uh, torture is not required according to abhinav gupta acharya so that kind of uh, yoga is prescribed by him yogo nanya kriya nanya tatva rudha kiya mati swachitta vasana shanto sa kriya itya vidhiyate so we find there that ultimately this kind of different yoga i am going to expound this this is exactly what abhinav gupta acharya explains in his tantra loka quoting from malini vijaya tantra he says ya yeah, when parvati asks parameshwara to explain the yoga parameshwara very clearly says that shrunu devi pravakshami yoga amritam anuttamam so now i'll explain to you the excellent nectar like yoga this is the best yat prapti shivatam martyaha labhanti ayasa varjitaha so without any effort without any physical exertion also you can get the fruit of yoga so therefore abhinav gupta acharya recommends that kind of yoga no suppression of emotions and instincts this is rather very surprising that are if i don't suppress my emotions and instincts how can i get to the yoga but uh, remember that even patanjali maharshi does not uh, use the word in that sense when he says chitta vritti nirodha that nirodha is not any forcible suppression of your instincts or emotions rather understanding them and simply uncoiling them so that the lower uh, instincts are totally destroyed totally removed and there is only higher consciousness that's why the word nirodha is variously explained by the commentators like uh, bhojaraja in rajamartanda explains the word uh, nirodha as swakarane layah so it is actually merging into its uh, cause therefore there is no suppression even according to patanjali maharshi but people generally argue that patanjali maharshi yama niyama they actually talk about such kind of things only because you are supposed to control you are supposed to suppress but it is a gradual process that you are not actually suppressing them you are trying to unravel the secret of all these emotions and instincts through gradual practice of the yoga anga and breath control is also not required at many places abhinav gupta acharya explains very clearly that pranam yama is not exactly in the way that is prescribed by the hatha yoga texts 
and during his period also people must be practicing that kind of pranayama unnecessarily pressing their nostrils etc abhinav gupta acharya says this is not the pranayama that i am going to recommend this is the higher uh, or rather highest yoga that is prescribed in the kashmira shaiva darshana and adi shankara acharya's uh, commentaries and uh, independent works on several uh, subjects you find like uh, viveka chudamani antar so there he mentions that pranayama nan asagra peedanam it is not just pressing your nostril rather uh, adi shankara acharya explains in a different sense saying that uh, puraka rechaka kumbhaka so he says puraka should be in the form of aham brahmasmi rechaka should be in the form of neha nanasti kinchana jagan mithya then kumbhaka should be ekameva dvitiyam brahma so this kind of puraka rechaka kumbhaka can be practiced and this is true pranayama to yoga according to shankaracharya and according to abhinav gupta acharya also and in this particular yoga system the seeker is free to enjoy this life but with limits as per humanistic laws the social laws are there so within that if you if you can uh, enjoy life no problem because in uh, bhagavad gita also especially while explaining the meaning of the shlokas like devan bhavayata anena te deva bhavayantu ha parasparam bhavayanta shreyav param avapsitha and before that also sahayajnam praja srushtva puru vacha prajapati hi anena prasavishyadvam esha vostu ishtakam dukk so anena so these commentators highlight that particular word and say that this uh, uh, pranom this anena refers to anena yajnena and that yajna is indriya dwara indriya devata tarpanam yajna in bhagavad gita bhashya we find this kind of explanation that the the indriyas are created for that purpose so let the indriyas flow don't stop them but you should not have any craving for them because everywhere there is shivatva only not a limited jivatva therefore if you can if you can feel that shivatva in shabda roopa rasa gandha sparsha then this cannot be any bandhana this cannot be vishaya vishaya in the sense visheshena uh, sinvanti visheshena badhananti iti vishaya but it all depends how you take them in the same bhagavad gita it is stated that yajnarthat karmano anyatra lokoyam karma bandharah the same thing can be applied to the uh, shaiva understanding of the thing like uh, yajna is indriya devata tarpanam indriya dwara then yajnarthat karmana anyatra that means if you don't uh, understand that everything is a part of the cosmic yajna then that particular karma will put you in bondage then in this context uh, from t- tantra loka we have taken this ihapi prasiddha purana siddhanta agama anumanaadi vihita purana shakti swabhava ishvare sati swatmani abhimukhi bhute tat pratisandhane na jnana mudeti nunam sayeva ishvaroham iti so this is the result ishvaroham i am the ishvara but when pratisandhanena jnana mudeti that kind of realization that takes place out of this pratisandhana out of this connectivity this is the yoga he is talking about how to connect myself with this world outside because it is not outside it is within just like a nyagrodha bija that has everything within similarly all this is in the chitta therefore this pratisandhana should take place that whatever is drishya visible this is nothing but the expression of shiva so this pratisandhana if it is there then abhimukhe bhute swatmani then purna shakti swabhava ishvare sati arthat that particular ishvara in the form of swatma when there is a kind of a kind of state facing this ishvara this is a kind of 
reflection in the mirror this is exactly what jnaneshwar maharaj says in the sangadeva pasashti he says paraspara pahata mukule bheda he says that jnaneshwar chakrapani doni dol dolas arasa jese paraspara pahata mukule bheda so it is like a mirror placed in front of another mirror so the reflection is unimaginable here also the sadhaka finds ishvara as his own self and this particular realization is the result of anumana agama adi pratyaksha is also included and all this comes from prasiddha purana siddhanta so in our spiritual context also the self is recognized as same shiva that is propounded in the purana agama and uh, substantiated by reasoning also so this this yoga of abhinav gupta tries to take us to that particular realization that is the pinnacle of all spiritual experience but here we should understand the role of diksha diksha is actually uh, initiation of the particular dis- uh, disciple into the discipline nacha adhikaritam adhikarita diksham vina yogesti shankare so in this particular shankara yoga you cannot get an entry without possessing the required spiritual qualification that means if you are not physically mentally qualified for that you cannot get into that spiritual experience kriya jnana vibhedena sacha dvedha nigadyate and this is also of two two types one is jnana another is kriya kriya jnana vibhedena sa means diksha so this diksha is also of two types and in the yoga path of this abhinav gupta acharya we find kriya diksha and jnana diksha so initially the kriya diksha is also given but at some places it is explained that kriya starts when jnana stops and now what about chitta because patanjali maharshi has very obviously stated in his uh, yoga sutra chitta vritti nirodhaha no way does he try to expound that this chitta can also be taken into ishvara tattva but we find in the works of abhinav gupta acharya and in the works of kshemaraj and others that chitireva chetana padavarudha chetya sankochini chittam so they understand that the mind the psyche the mind is also nothing but the divine consciousness but chitireva the same consciousness chetana pada avarudha because it has slipped down from the state of chetana chetya sankochini it is contracted it is contracted in the sense it is contracted with reference to that particular object so it its uh, observation is limited that particular mind observes whatever is present to it this is exactly what patanjali maharshi explained in the fourth pada that chitta depends on that particular object especially while refuting the vijnana vada bauddha vada patanjali maharshi also says that you should accept the chitta you should accept uh, an objective world outside also because jnana is ascertained the nature of jnana is ascertained and differentiated from other on the basis of this object if there is no object how can you differentiate two cognitions that is the problem so chitireva chetana padavaruda chetya sankochini chittam so this is the explanation provided by abhinav gupta acharya and tantra loka also that the chitti itself is chitta therefore uh, we understand that in patanjali yoga darshana chitti shakti aparinamini in the vyasa bhashya we find these terms chitti chitti shakti aparinamini darshita vishaya shuddha cha ananta cha aprati sang aprati sankrama 
all these are the adjectives of chiti chaitanya and on the contrary chitta is presented as something different it is a dravya it is jada it is a product of prakriti but here we find in the uh, abhinavgupta acharya's philosophy that chitta is nothing but the same chaitanya that has come down to the inferior level therefore there is every chance that you can raise your chitta back to its uh, previous level that is superior level so all activities of chitta should be properly understood then all need to be defined then this uh, inferior level will be totally removed and chitta will get back to its previous stage of chetana so this is a very important contribution of this yoga of abhinavgupta acharya that your dhyana that means your regular constant meditation practice of meditation will take you to that higher level that your mind is no more an inert obstacle in your path of yoga rather you have realized that it is also an expression of the pure consciousness so this is absolutely different from what patanjali maharishi had perceived and abhinavgupta acharya sticks on to that and he presents his understanding of yoga in this manner then coming to the auxiliaries of yoga that means what actually uh, can be taken as component of yoga what can be taken as uh, useful in the path of yoga so naturally we look to patanjali yoga sutra then yoga upanishads all that and we find in them that uh, patanjali maharshi recommends or prescribes eight components of yoga while some yoga upanishads present seven 10 12 and hatha yoga 4 so the auxiliary parts of yoga are taken differently but when it comes to the uh, tantra loka and abhinavgupta acharya's understanding of yoga we find in them that there are only six anga yoga angas are six but not exactly uh, the six that are given in the yoga paksha no these are different and you observe here asana is removed yama niyama are removed so three are gone then there should be five but tarka is added this tarka is not just uh, reasoning but it is satarka satarka kutara chedya abhinavgupta acharya has mentioned somewhere that this satarka is like an axe and it removes all your vikalpa and take you to the nirvikalpa sadvidya therefore satarka is nothing but sadvidya and it is mentioned in the tantra loka iti pancha yama saksha samvidhi nopayoginah tarka prabhutayo ye cha niyamah similarly na asanam pranayamascha why because sarvam etat bahya vijrumbhitam very perfect observation that all this is nothing but an a, a kind of demonstration a kind of exhibition you are just uh, trying to impress others your asana pranayama then what is useful in the path of yoga first is tarka your alertness your application of logic but a very sound logic because sat tarka somewhere abhinavgupta acharya explains that sat is the adjective added to tarka to qualify that particular one so it is an adjective and when it is used as an adjective it it actually uh, is meant for a different uh, purpose and we find that uh, yeah so, yes sat is mentioned like san asau tarkah sauscha asau tarkah sat tarkah and what is this sat adjective he says saksha tatva nishtah if if sat is not there it is only tarka but sat adjective is added to distinguish this from the other kinds of reasoning practiced in other schools that is pure logic you are actually exerting your 
intellect you are applying your logic okay but here it is tatva nishtha it is directly rooted on the reality atayeva tarkantara vilakshana therefore it is different from the other saha param kotim praptah tarkah satarkah so this way they actually explain that tarka is useful in this particular uh, yoga marga and uh, whatever tarka is practiced in other hetu shastram cha yalloke nitya nitya vidambakam vadajalpa vitanda bhir vivadante anishchitah he says vadajalpa vitanda the tautology or uh, ramification all this is unnecessary so this kind of uh, uh, discrimination is made here you find tarka dharana dhyana pranayama pratyahara ultimately samadhi so uh, this tarka can take us to samadhi like patanjali maharshi's uh, shraddha can take us to samadhi shraddha virya smriti samadhi prajnapurvaka itaresham so patanjali maharshi has very clearly prescribed that shraddha can take us to samadhi and prajna and that shraddha is explained in the vyasa bhashya as chetasah samprasadah astikya buddhi so this kind of shraddha can take us to samadhi and in uh, abhinavgupta acharya's yoga this tarka can take us to samadhi but the tarka should be based on the reality not uh, just to vanquish others or win over the other people defeat other people it should not be it should not be aimed at that and therefore he said somewhere श्री पूर्व शास्त्रे तं प्रोक्तम तर्को योगांगम उत्तमम सो दिस तर्क इज उत्तम योगांग द बेस्ट योगांग हि सेड हेया ध्यालोचना तस्मा तत्र यत्नः प्रशस्यते सो देयर यू डोंट हैव उपादेय हेय हेयोपादेय शून्य दैट काइंड ऑफ तर्क इज प्रिस्क्राइब्ड हियर श्री पूर्व तंत्र दैट इज श्री तंत्र इन द कश्मीर शैविज्म एंड दिस वे वी अंडरस्टैंड that abhinavgupta acharya also focuses more on the efficacy of sat tarka and you find this uh, in some chapters of tantra loka and ultimately integral yoga of abhinavgupta acharya presents the essence of yoga in this form that eta devahi nama yoginam yogitvam in what way nikhilam idam vishvam shivatmana parijanati very beautifully summarized that what is what actually makes a yogi yogi because of what a yogi becomes a yogi it says nikhilam idam vishvam shivatmana parijanati so pari paritah janati that means at every point in every object in every element of the creation he finds the shiva tattva nikhilam idam vishvam that's why even in the vishnu sahasranam we find vyasa maharshi prescribing this vishvam vishnu ho a great mantra is given that this is the ultimate thing and the same thing is reflected in the philosophy of abhinavgupta acharya that uh, is found in the tantra loka and other works that nikhilam idam vishvam shivatmana parijanati so nothing is different from shiva nothing is away from shiva everything is within shiva or you can say everything is shiva so this realization itself makes yogi thus a yogi who has thus succeeded in transcending the limitations of all duality he becomes jivan mukta and finds everything as shiva and this is the culmination of all spiritual practice this is yoga that uh, abhinav gupta acharya wants to prescribe to us uh, thank you all thank you very much thank you uh, madhusudan garu uh, thank you so much uh,